ever wondered why some air fried foods just don't turn out quite right? I'm about to reveal the top five things you should never make in an air fryer and what you could do instead. My name is Kathy and I love to empower air fryer owners. In fact, a lot of my viewers call me either their air fryer coach or the air fryer queen. You ready to learn more? Let's go. Now this first one might be a little controversial. Let me know what you think in the comments, but in my opinion, fresh broccoli is not good when you cook in the air fryer. Every time I've cooked fresh broccoli in the air fryer, the delicate little ends are just charred and burnt and the broccoli itself is just really dried out. I've tried it at several different times and temperatures and I'm just not a fan. Do you agree or disagree with me on this one? What I like to do instead is use frozen broccoli. It cooks up so nicely in the air fryer. Just pop it in the basket and then you cook it at 300 for about 10 minutes and bam, that is the easiest air fryer side. Now, if you really want to use fresh broccoli, I do have this hack. First, take your fresh broccoli and chop it up, wash it, then place it in a bowl with a little water in it. And here's the hack. We're gonna microwave this for just two minutes. And this is called parboiling. And parboiling the broccoli is gonna keep it from getting all dried out in the air fryer. Now, you're just gonna get your parboiled broccoli and combine it with your seasonings and then place it in the air fryer. And typically at this point, you would air fry at 400 for like five to eight more minutes. But because I'm using the Instant Vortex today, yeah, it does force that preheat. And I always forget to make it preheat before I put the food in. I'm just gonna keep an eye on it and I promise you, just five to eight minutes of 400, you're gonna end up with perfect roasted fresh broccoli. And then when your broccoli's done, just squeeze a little lemon juice on there. Oh my goodness, come see what everyone thinks about this. Roasted garlic broccoli. It's tasty. And the microwave tip just really helps with not drying it out and not like not having like way too crunchy broccoli. Do you like it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Mm -hmm. I really five, like it. Five, which I usually don't like raw broccoli. But. The next thing I recommend not air frying is anything with wet powder. Think of the deep fried foods that you would find at the fair, like a hand dipped corn dog, a funnel cake, or deep fried Oreos, or other things like tempura shrimp or veggies. These things do need to be deep fried because it's actually like flash frying it. You've got that vat of super hot oil, it hits the food in an instant and just immediately hardens up the batter. And that's how you get that beautiful golden exterior crispy finish with the tender inside. But it uses a lot of oil and it's not that good for you. I don't know about you, but it really hurts my gut. And I really have to laugh because I was asking ChatGPT what types of wet battered foods I could cook in the air fryer. It recommended that I batter up some raspberries and air fry them. So I was like, okay, what the heck? I'll give it a try. I dipped them in pancake batter and you can see how well that turned out. Highly do not recommend. But I do have some substitutions. Instead of using wet batter, you could use something like a pre-packaged dough, usually just found in the United States. So using things like Pillsbury dough, you could then wrap it around Oreo cookies or candy and then air fry them to kind of get a little bit of that fair food effect. But if you're wanting to get that deep fried effect with meats and vegetables, you're going to want to do this process where first you're going to dredge the food in, in a flour or cornstarch. Then you're going to dip it into an egg wash or a buttermilk mixture. Then you'll do one final drip in another dry mixture. And this usually consists of breadcrumbs or panko, or I've even seen crushed chips or cereal. You just smush that coating right into the food and then you mist it with oil. That's gonna help everything adhere to the food and get you that ultra nice crispy finish. And you're using way less oil. All right, this next thing, maybe you can let me know if you've tried this. Have you tried making a cake in your air fryer? If so, how did it turn out for you? In my experience, air fryer cake's not really worth all of the effort. Number one, it really does not save time. That is because Obviously you cannot put an entire cake pan into an air fryer. So let's say you make up a cake mix recipe or a box mix. You're gonna have to cut that in half and fully bake that one half. Now because the batter is so dense and you're cooking it in this small compact space, it's gonna take quite a while to cook all the way through with that batter. And the problem is, is that it's so close to the burner, you're oftentimes gonna find out that the top of your cake is gonna start burning. So then you're gonna need to cover it up with foil to prevent it from burning. And 
in my opinion, is just too much of a hassle. By the time you were done, even with preheating an oven, it was gonna be faster to just cook it up in the oven. So instead of baking cake in an air fryer, I have two different recommendations. The first one is to make lava cakes. Now I have a video where I show you how to make these and oh my goodness, they are so delicious. I will link to it down in the description box. And I just have to say, these were born to be made in the air fryer because the tops get nice and crispy and the insides are nice and gooey and oh my goodness, it's amazing. The other option is to make cupcakes in the air fryer. You'll most likely still need to cook them in batches, but the good news is, is that they do cook faster than if you are using an oven. The only downside is because of the high speed of the fan, usually the cupcakes end up a little bit tipsy topsy, lopsided, whatever you want to call it. But once you pop the frosting on, it really doesn't matter. And yes, they still taste fantastic. In fact, I really love the little crispy finish that you get on the top. Okay, the fourth thing I do not recommend cooking in the air fryer, but I do have one little caveat on that is pasta. Now I love pasta, but generally I don't recommend trying to cook it up in your air fryer. And that's because you really can't, nor should you try to boil water in your air fryer. So it really makes more sense to use your stove top to cook up your pasta, but then you could use your air fryer to finish baking it up with other meats and cheeses and sauces like you've seen me do before. And the caveat to that is I've done baked mac and cheese and the key to that is soaking your pasta first in some super hot water. Then you put it in your air fryer safe dish, cover it with foil, and then air frying it at 360 degrees. It'll take anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes to become fully cooked through and you have a beautiful, yummy, delicious baked mac and cheese dish. Speaking of cheese, cheese and air fryers don't really mix so well together. If you've ever tried to clean your air fryer after getting melted cooked cheese on it, you will know just like I do that, nope, it is not a fun party. But I do have some powerful tips for you because melting cheese in the air fryer is also the bomb diggity. If you have tried melting cheese in your air fryer, then you've probably experienced the fan blowing it up around, displacing cheese, and in the end, it really doesn't melt on your food the way you intended. So here's my super cool hack. In most cases, I will add cheese at the very, very end. At this point, the food that you're putting on top of is already warm and the air fryer is warm. So drop the cheese on, close up the basket, just let it sit there for about a minute. The cheese starts to melt, it becomes heavier, and then you could continue cooking. And if you're doing like a cheeseburger specifically, you don't even have to turn the air fryer back on. Just put it on top of your patty, close it up, let it sit there, and boom, you have a beautiful cheeseburger ready to enjoy. And the cheese is still exactly where you want it to be. And my other tip to help you out with cheese is to for sure use some parchment paper liners. This keeps all the cheese mess right inside of here. Then you're gonna lift it right out of your basket and boom, air fryer is still looking super clean. I have parchment paper liners you can snag at my new online store. It's pineandpepper.co. And then make sure you watch this one so you don't make any of these air fryer mistakes. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.